Hi guys, my name is Sarah and I'm a senior here at Conestoga and I'm here to talk to you guys about fashion. Um, so I have always had a passion for fashion. I love fashion. The one in the middle was taking was taken far too re recently for me to be proud of. Um, but yeah, I've always really liked fashion. I always consider myself like pretty stylish. Like, you know, I really like it. Um, and then two years ago, I was given the unique opportunity to go to Italy. And so when I went to Italy, I like forced my parents to take me to Milan because Milan is the fashion capital of the world. And um, this is me and my sister at the oldest mall in Milan, and that's the Milan Cathedral. Um, and in the oldest Milan mall, they have um, the Gucci store. And you know, like me being the fashionista that I am, me and my friend, me and my family go into the Gucci store. You know, gotta do that. So um, as I was perusing through the store, one sign in particular really caught my eye, and the sign said Asian fit eyewear. And at first, I was kind of like, okay, I guess that's okay to say. Definitely not offensive, you know. Like, I don't know. Like, but then the more I thought about it, um, the more I realized, wait, this is actually kind of cool because they're incorporating a different culture and a different eye type, in a sense, to fashion, to high-end fashion. So, um, and, this, and um, this is actually happening a lot in the fashion industry. The fashion industry is definitely taking a step forward. Um, here on the left, you see Dolce & Gabbana's um, line of high-end abayas and hijabs. So, they're marketing towards like the Muslim world. And then on the right, you see Christian Louboutin's um, new line. This actually came out like two weeks ago of his ballet flats, which incorporate all different skin colors to his new ballet flats. So, and this makes sense because, you know, one of the basic tenets of the fashion industry is the more diverse points of view on a design team, the more broadly relevant and desirable the end product will be, and hence the more successful the brand will be. So, you know, it makes sense that, you know, fashion is taking a step forward and like becoming more diverse. But if you take a closer look, however, this isn't necessarily the case. So these are the five um, biggest luxury market um, luxury brands in the world, and um, all five of them are run by um, like people of like white descent. And only one of them, which is Prada, has a female um, high-end like design manager. And also, if you look at if you look closer into the other like brands of high-end fashion, most of their design teams like I, I think it's like. 75% of them are just, is all like Caucasian people. And then if you look at um, the current fashion um, fashion shows from spring 2016, from all four of the main areas, the purple is the percent of model castings of white models, and you can see that that's an overwhelming majority. It's about 82% of, of all the fashion shows that were in um, Fashion Week of spring 2016. And to put that in perspective, about 20% of the world population is white, so you can see that there's a little bit of an imbalance and a little bit of like just dead imbalance in general. And so I guess the question that I was left with, left with was why? Why does this imbalance happen? And why should I care as a consumer? It's not like I can afford like I thought I could afford like a sleeping bag, but um, if you look closer, the top 10 luxury markets in the world. Um, as you can see, like it's mostly um, west. It's mostly countries from the Western Hemisphere, and then a little bit of an Asian market, and then a little bit of a Middle Eastern market. So, if you look at the graphs again, this kind of makes sense because the market that the markets that can afford these brands are the markets that have the highest GDP, and those are why there's a lot of white model castings because those are the those like because the Western Hemisphere countries are ones that can afford the brands. So it's, it's important to realize that while fashion is an art, it's a business first and foremost. So it has to market to people who are buying the most. So um, it's, no surprise, it's no surprise that this is why there is a little bit of an imbalance in fashion. And it's just smart business to focus on the markets that can buy the product. But the only problem with this is that fashion also is an art. And if you don't have um, all arts represent, all cultures and all ethnicities represented, then you go into the thin line um, of becoming like, culturally appropriated. So I'm going to talk a little bit about cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. So cultural appreciation is learning about another culture, respecting the culture, and understanding the cultural significance of a certain object in a culture. And cultural appropriation is taking a certain object from a culture and using it for your own self-gain without learning about, about the significance of it to a certain culture and respecting that culture in general. So here, I have some two examples right here. Um, this, on the left, this is uh, a model who was in Valentino's uh, February show. And as you can see, she has cornrows in her hair. And I personally love cornrows. I think they're beautiful and they're nice. But 
when for a lot of people there's a lot of like, controversial controversy with them in, especially in the black community so when I was doing this talk I felt like it was important it was like, a great opportunity for me to learn more about it and cornrows are actually come from ancient Nigeria the braids represent status and other things um, in Nigerian culture like um, like marriage and age and other things and there's also a very big like social stigma and social media about black hair and just when black people wear, black women wear cornrows, it's considered ghetto, it's considered um, like nappy, it's, con it's not considered pretty. So the thing that was really controversial about Valentino putting it in the show is that all of like, the fashion critics were like, oh, Valentino's so innovative, he's so cutting edge, he's so edgy. But that's kind of, it's kind of a double standard that on someone else, it's con on someone else's hair, it's considered like beautiful, but when black women wear it, they get made fun of for it. And then on the right, I have a picture of Selena Gomez wearing a bindi after her MTV um, Movie Award performance. And this is especially like not okay to do because bindis are very, very um, like sacred in Hinduism, and they're supposed to, they're basically like a third eye, and you wear them for piety and not really for fashion and for um, for like a fashion statement. It's supposed to it's supposed to show like how religious you are. It's supposed to show like your spiritual journey. And then I also have some examples of cultural appreciation. So on the left, it's Melissa. Oh. You know, um, she came to my house last year when um, one of my cousins was getting married, and we did a wedding shower for her. And Melissa, I like gave Melissa like one of my outfits, and like she wore like some jewelry, and she really learned about the culture, and she really learned about like the significance of why like, I wear some things that I wear, and like um, even like this entire week. With like you know it's been like cultural appreciation appreciation week basically because you have all the different culture clubs showing you their culture like I have the like, Kenna on from like South Asian culture club and I don't know I've been talking a lot about South Asian culture but that's because like I am South Asian so like that's the only thing that I can like really give you like an honest opinion about but um, so this is like cultural appreciation because Mel understands the significance and she understands like why I wear what I wear and then on the right I have Angelina Jolie with um, an Afghani kid when she went to my refugee camps and she's wearing a headscarf and she like understands the culture because she's been there and she knows why the women wear it. Um, so why should I care? You know, like I said before, it's not like any of us can really afford high-end fashion, but mm -hmm. the biggest trend that's happening in the fashion world nowadays is a lot of partnerships with like affordable clothing lines. Like on the right you see the Balmain, H&M, um, partnership to make their clothes more affordable and then you know the Lily Pulitzer and Target one that happened last year to make Lily Pulitzer stuff more affordable and also another thing is that high-end designers really define the fashion industry you know when I think fashion I think Louis Vuitton I think Chanel I think um, like Hermes so they're really the face of the fashion industry and there isn't really like a market for like middle-class clothing lines to have like ads in the ad market so most kids see just like these high-end fashion lines. And you know, you see just one type of body, one type of skin tone, one type of height, and it really promotes conformity. It promotes like just wanting to be the certain ideal type of person when you know we should really be promoting individuality and promoting, you know, just all cultures. Um, and then so some solutions. From an administrative standpoint, the reason that there is like a lack of diverse designers and a lack of just like um, <coughs> see, like diverse CEOs is basically because there isn't really an outlet for most like kids to look at the arts. You know, like you look at if you look in the inner cities, like they're getting rid of arts programs, and there's such a stigma against the arts in general that people don't think that it's a successful career path. I mean, if I was truly like as passionate as I said I am about fashion, then I would probably be majoring in fashion in college, which I'm not. So, you know, and unfortunately it's because there's such a, there's such a stigma. Like, I think we as a community to promote the arts and keep the arts in schools to really get, to really, to really get the solution. Because I read a lot of articles and a lot of articles of like, designers and they said, we would love to have different diverse people. We'd love to have that. There just isn't like a surplus of it. There isn't, there isn't any really available to us. And another thing we can do about cultural appropriation is like call your friends. If you're going to Firefly, like, made in America and you see your friend wearing like a Native American headdress, tell them, hey, that's not cool. That's, 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 that's just weird, that's just weird, in my opinion. <laughs> or like if they're wearing like a bindi, be like, hey, like, don't do that. You have to, I think 
we as like a community need to like call our friends out and like not be afraid to like stand up for what we believe in. So yeah, that was a little bit of a So yeah, thank you guys for listening.